So awesome new room. I'm glad all of you found parking. Um, how many of this, uh, by the way, my name is Matt Gifford. I'm one of the organizers of Mobile Portland. Um, how many of you, this is your first Mobile Portland meeting? Cool. Um, so we do this real quick. I know it's boring for the people who are here regularly. Obviously, we're about mobile. Um, we meet the fourth Monday of the month, but I'm uh, pretty sure next month's going to be an exception, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, why Monday? Uh, so there's an organization called Mobile Mondays that we're kind of modeled after. Um, we're not actually affiliated with them because they wouldn't return Jason's call for some reason. Um, <laughs> Uh, we have a website, mobileportland.com. Uh, there you can sign up for a mailing list that is just announcements about this meeting. So it's like two or three emails a month. Um, we also have a Google group so that you guys can talk to each other. Um, we also announce the meetings there so you don't have to sign up for both. Um, uh, we also have a Twitter account, uh, at Mobile Portland, and an IRC that I no longer advertise because I'm the only one there. <laughs> Uh, so there's lots of events, and this is the reason uh, we're probably going to have to reschedule, um, because as you'll see, we have OzCon here, and Breaking Development, and Phone Gap Day, all kind of at the same time. Um, and Cloud4, the company that Jason and I work for, we're actually all going to be down in San Diego, so we're not going to be here for the meeting. Um, so we'll make an announcement about what we're doing next month. I don't know if it's going to be before or after. It would be nice to have it during OzCon, though. Um, so, uh, I'm going to come around, uh, actually I want to mention, if, uh, since a lot of you are new, um, Mobile Portland runs a device lab, so if you need to test on anything that you don't have access to, um, on the website there is a section that has a list of all the devices and what operating system they're running, and a form that you can sign up to get some time on those devices. Um, they have to be left at, you know, at the office, but, um, you know, we have people in there, uh, MJ can tell you, uh, <laughs> that are in for hours at a time working on the devices. So if you have need, or if you just want to check something out, take a look on the site, see what we've got. Um, also, we take donations. So if you have an old device, uh, especially some really weird Android device that you don't want anymore, that you think somebody might be interested in, um, get in touch with Jason, and we'll figure out how to get that to us. Um, so I'm going to come around with the mic. Uh, we do announcements. You can talk about an event or a job opening, or if you're new to the area and looking to connect with people um, about you know, finding a job or something like that, just raise your hand or come around. Um, just one rule for this and for the questions later, um, especially in this room, because it sound doesn't carry, make sure that you have a mic before you start talking. Uh, my name is Scott Patton, I'm with Tech Systems. We're a uh, Portland's largest IT staffing firm. Um, we put people to work um, in all areas of IT, applications development, end user support, network infrastructure, um, and even telecommunications. Uh, last year we worked with over 150 companies in Portland, and right now we have more jobs on the board, per se, than we can fill. Um, so if you know anyone who'd be interested in hearing about new opportunities, um, so we'd be interested in, in kind of top grading your career or their salary, it's a great time in Portland uh, to be kind of putting your toe in the job market to see what's out there. Um, yeah, come see me afterwards, and if there's enough interest, we might go grab a beer uh, over at Rogue. Hi guys, my name is Will. I'm also an IT recruiter here in Portland with a much smaller shop. And uh, I know <laughs> <laughs> most of you here like yeah, the smaller companies, but I've got a Fortune 500 company. They're about to ramp up their mobile development team. It's going to be an iOS application looking for developers, business analysts, project managers to have experience with mobile development or web, web application developments. I'll be here after. I'll put out a uh, message on the Google groups later. Happy to speak with you about these or uh, other positions if you just want to know what's going on out there. So thank you to our sponsors, thanks to Urban Airship for the beer and for the awesome room, um, and to Cloud4 uh, for the food. Um, 
Urban Airship, I mean, we say this every month. Urban Airship, I'm sure they're still hiring for tons and tons of positions, so if you're looking for a job, chances are, if you're here, they have a job for you. Um, Cloud4, I think we're still hiring for a front-end developer, pretty heavy chops on JavaScript, so um, if you're looking for a position like that, we are hiring, I think, still. Ah, so, um, this is a really interesting story. Uh, as you all know, we're kind of working our way out of a downturn, or maybe we're still in the midst of it, and it's going to get worse. And um, one of the you know one of the sectors that really took the hardest hit is is building. Um, and you know, if you're an architect and nobody's building buildings, that's not a very good place to be. And so Milos saw that, and he was doing really great work. I mean, if you know what Dwell Magazine is. His stuff was in Vogue magazine. Um, but two years ago, he decided, let's find something else. Shut down his, his business. Decided mobile software was the thing to get into. Didn't have an idea for what he wanted to do, necessarily. But just mobile software. Um, so that's a really, really huge leap. Especially for somebody who has no software background. He's an art architect. So this is a story of how to make it, although he's still working on it, in, <laughs> in mobile software. <laughs> so here's Milos.
interesting, they have a really cool product that everybody else, you know, masses could use. Um, and uh, it was interesting because I feel like uh, software is one of those fields where you don't really need that uh, much of an upfront, there's not that much of an upfront cost. But if I, feel, I feel like if I wanted to open a restaurant, without even knowing whether, without getting a first customer, I have to rent the space, kitchen, all this stuff. And it seemed like uh, with software that was not the case. Um, so uh, it was really hard, but I just decided that that was going to be something that I was going to kind of go for. So um, I ended up opening a software development company and starting from zero. Um, and uh, it was really exhilarating, it was, it was really, really scary. Um, so because I started from, from zero, I decided to, uh, uh, that networking really was going to be the key to success. Uh, I didn't really want to go out there and make all the mistakes myself, so I figured I'd better uh, talk to people and really kind of learn from my peers about how to, how to make this happen. Um, I didn't even have an idea in mind when I started. I probably went through about a dozen to 15 ideas. Some were really hilarious, some were really bad, but uh, you know, it, it takes a while to, to, to kind of warm up. And then uh, the, the, the current idea, the space view, is uh, something that I, I kind of uh, landed on and decided to, to pursue. Uh, the, the interesting thing about that was that I really felt like uh, I wanted to do something that had some semblance, some uh, um, connection with uh, architecture, with ideas, that, with some, something that I knew a lot about. Uh, and so, um, architecture basically is based on visualization. Architects uh, des design and describe things that aren't built yet. So, one of the biggest challenges for architects is um, how to describe to our, our, our clients what something will look like, and whether they like it or not, after it's, be after it's built. So, um, really, the best tool for that is 3D modeling. When I show clients uh, floor plans and elevations, they have no clue what's going on. It's just a two-dimensional image. <coughs> when we build a 3D model of a space, people just get it. They understand, they can relate, and it's a, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, the problem with it is that uh, it's a, it takes a while to create a 3D model. So, if I wanted to build a model of this room, I'd have to they get a big measure and measure the footprint of the space and the height and then go into the office and build from scratch this whole space prior to being able to do anything with it. So um, I thought there's got to be a way to kind of use the, the latest hardware and software to expedite and make that process easier and better. Um, so mobile devices have cameras now, so it's very easy to uh, take a photo of a space and I figured if we could just uh, take a photo of the space, kind of add perspective to it in some way, and then have pre-made 3D objects, then we really uh, can expedite the whole process and let anybody be able to just drag and drop or in import um, an object and see it in scale and perspective. So, uh, and I thought that um, this would be a really good idea, not only for architects and interior designers, but just in, in, in general for a shopping. If I wanted to buy a table or a, or a chair, and I wanted to see what it looked like in my house, I could do that immediately. So um, I, uh, I thought it was a pretty cool uh, concept, and I, I, I went did some research, and it turns out that there's just not much work done in that area, so I decided to, to go for it. Um, so that's kind of how I started. Um, and because I started from the ground up, I, I just needed I, need, I, I needed a lot of help. So uh, it was tough because at first I didn't even know uh, what kind of help I needed. So my, my first networking efforts were into realizing and figuring out what kind of program is, need, is needed to create a 3D engine. And it literally took me months to figure out, you know, it, it's not just a native development, it's not uh, something generic, it's a very specific field of uh, photogrammetry and uh, OpenGL programming. It's still Spanish religious to me. But, um, so um, I just figured out that this was a good idea and I really wanted to kind of go for it. Go for, go for it. And so um, we, 
you're trying to create a company, it's just it's such a massive problem that really um, it's a, it's just it, it's a fun. It's also really a, a lot of fun, but there are no rules and there's no clear way of how to do this. There's a lot of there are a lot of videos out uh, on the web and a lot of books that are kind of helping guides, but most of them have some varying degrees of consistency. Uh, so it's literally up to the founders to, to do it. So um, I really wanted to have uh, uh, to build a team right away. And so since I'm a non-technical uh, founder, I really wanted to get a technical co-founder. And uh, I, I tried, however, uh, there was no go. I couldn't get anybody uh, to buy. And uh, it's, it, I'm not surprised because all I have is this uh, interesting idea with no background and really no prior um, experience in the field. And so I said, okay, well, if not now, i got to start and do this on my own, and then we'll, we'll see how things go. Uh, so uh, I just uh, started uh, networking, and uh, it's been so much fun to network in this town. Uh, it's interesting because I've been here for 20 years, but I've been in architecture, which is a little different field. And so I was totally brand new to all this stuff. And so my, my first uh, event was uh, a startup weekend last spring, and it just blew my mind. I was in a room with hundreds of people, I guess, uh, I'm not sure how many people were there, 120 people, who all were entrepreneurs and who all wanted to start companies. Um, and so it was just exhilarating and it was great, but it was also really uh, difficult because uh, even to sign up for uh, the start of the weekend, it, it said are you technical or non technical? So I went to the, that was easy, I went to the non technical <laughs> call, but then it says are you. Uh, Marketing or business strategy, and I really had no idea. So uh, I just I don't even remember what I put down. I just kind of wanted to do it, uh, and uh, and then I, I learned about things like Caligator and and uh, the, the the super rich networking kind of uh, culture in Portland, uh, and it's really been uh, fantastic. So I just tried to go to as many events as I could, and one of the first ones was uh, Mobile Portland, which is why I'm really excited to to be here tonight. And uh, I just I reached out to uh, the Google groups and uh, I asked the question, hey, how do I hire a programmer? <laughs> you know? And uh, I feel like it was, it was actually a really interesting uh, dialogue that I was able to get because I was really kind of honest and I was like, hey, you know, I, I don't know this, but I have an idea. This is kind of what I want to do. And, uh, it, you know that it was that uh, basic of a start, and and you know it, just with, with time I started to meet more and more people and learn more and more, and, and so I've been asked better and better questions, um, and uh, it's just been a, a slow and steady journey um, ever since. Um, so my first priority was to build a prototype. Uh, I, I felt like, again, that my, the, uh, the idea made sense, but I wasn't sure if it was possible. It was technically possible. It seemed like there were all these separate steps that existed, but nobody's put them together in a way that I kind of envisioned. And so prior to doing any uh, other things, I wanted to make sure that what I, what I wanted was possible. Um, so uh, who do I hire? How do you go about this? So I didn't have a co-founder that was technical, so I had to, I had to hire somebody. And I felt like I, I put um, kind of the I, I put I created three groups of, of, of developers. I guess it was the contract uh, contractors for hire. And it was uh, getting a company to do the development, for like a, a shop, and then uh, hiring my own team. And so hiring my own team really wasn't an option for me because I really wasn't. Sh Sure, I couldn't afford and I didn't really want to hire a team where I was just getting started. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. So I was either getting a, a, getting a contractor to work on it or hiring um, a shop. And I felt like uh, getting a shop was going to be more expensive and I really wasn't sure again what, what, the, what I needed. So I kind of started uh, with some with contractors and I hired a few and it didn't, didn't go very well. Uh, a couple of them, one, or, one person I, I, I hired and didn't really perform, didn't do anything after a week, so I found a, a different person that kind of started doing some work, but it really wasn't uh, 
clicking just yet. And, uh, and then I, I kept networking, I kept trying to find people who knew about this particular 3D modeling thing and uh, I was able to uh, find um, connected spot matrix. So I, I feel like I was lucky because the programming that I was really after is pretty sp specific and it uh, turns out that the um, spot matrix was a local company and that they've done uh, augmented reality and kind of 3D modeling work before. So I was super happy to, to uh, find them and uh, uh, in a very short period of time they were able to, sh to have a working prototype, a basic working prototype, which was awesome. Uh, it just, uh, it made so much sense because they've already done a lot of work <coughs> in the area, so um, they were just able to put things together and to kind of move forward in a really concise way. So um, that was great, but it, it's funny, I feel like every milestone you reach as a, as a startup, just uh, you get more, more, more and more difficult problems. So now that uh, I knew that this was going to be possible, the more part that was working, um, I had to deal with all these other problems, such as uh, okay, so now uh, I need to have, have a business development plan to, to go about this, I need to sell this thing, I need to market this thing, I need to grow a team, and so um, just uh, it's, a, it's an interesting, interesting challenge. And so I, I just did the same thing I've done kind of along the, the way is just uh, educate myself, write down what the problems are, figure out who are the people that can help me out. And so I would just seek out mentors and um, advisors who would be able to help me with, those, with all those areas. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's just a... I feel like it's a, it's, a, it's a, we all know that I guess the entrepreneur's journey is very up and down, very uh, chaotic and very exciting at the same time. And so I, I think you just kind of have to go through and do as best as you can. My, my, my goal from the start was to have a really good team. So I, I just tried to find people who were uh, excited about the, uh, the project and who wanted to come, come on board and help out in any way they can. They, they, they could. I found some people who were really um, senior level people who were really good at what they did and they could offer uh, maybe a, a, an hour of time uh, each month. <coughs> I found some, some people who were able to, to, to help out in a larger capacity and um, you just have to make it work, I think. Uh, some people, um, I, I feel like I, I gave a chance to everybody who, who gave interest. So. Um, some people didn't work out, some people worked out great, but you just kind of grow slowly as, 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 you, as you move forward. Um, I'm just showing you here some different areas of, of what an entrepreneur needs to kind of think about. The business model, the development, uh, customer validation, presentations, sales. So a uh, funny anecdote is I, uh, I was thinking about, so my, the idea is very visual. It's placing a 3D model in space. So I felt like the best way to present this is to have a video, to have a visual presentation. And uh, I remember coming, coming to a Mobile Portland uh, event and uh, when we had this uh, uh, announcement at, at the beginning of the, of the event, somebody stood up, uh, Clint stood up and said, hey, my name's Clint and I do videos. And I was like, yes, <laughs> great, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I really would like to do a video. And so. Uh, Way network, I guess, is a, this is a great, great place to, to, to do that. Um, I try to join every uh, group that I could find, like Thai and OEN, and I, I found that those networks were uh, networking events were really, really fabulous. Um, there's another great uh, place called OTBC that's in Beaverton. It's kind of a trek from Portland, but it's really worth it. They have great programs and really enjoy that. Um, I also uh, did a program with uh, 10X, they used to be called uh, Portland 10. Uh, it's, not an it's not an accelerator per se, like uh, some of the other accelerators, but it's really focused on revenue. I really um, 
thought that their model was fantastic. Basically, you you pay to get into this program, and, and they just kind of help you really hone in on revenue and, and make sure that the business you're building is not you're not building a company to um, borrow more money. You're you're making a, a profitable business as, as quickly as possible. Uh, I got a desk at Netspace. I feel like it's pretty awesome that Portland has all these kind of uh, um, spaces where you can uh, rent a desk with other entrepreneurs and uh, startups. Uh, in the environment, it's really uh, great for um, and can get some good support. Uh, kept going. Um, so again, with, with mentors and advisors, I feel like I really uh, I would go about identifying what, what are all the different types of things that I needed in my business, and then try to find people who knew about uh, those types of fields. So I, I have um, mentors and advisors in, in, in software development, in augmented reality, business development, marketing, sales. Uh, uh, <coughs> for example, right? my, the idea is that. Uh, we wanted to create an app that's going to help retailers sell stuff. So um, I don't really know much about uh, how that whole thing works. Uh, but there are others that, that, that know and <laughs> that do. So um, it, it was, it's all about persistence, I think, being an entrepreneur. Uh, it's funny because I feel like there's no one or easy way to do it. Um, Everything I read said that uh, all the accelerator programs wanted teams that have co-founders. I really wanted a co-founder, but I, I just couldn't get one. And uh, you, know, you just uh, do with what you've got. So I was able to, because I had a, a business before, I was able to have a, uh, take out a, a commercial loan. So I was able to um, hire people as contractors that direction. So you just kind of take all the advantages that you can and you have and you go forward. Uh, it's definitely key to have a good team um, and I've built a, I really love the people that I work with and I've built a really solid team so far but um, that's just, it, it's, it's a part of a journey and there's, there, there are no rules which is really exciting. I think one of the challenges is, is that uh, identifying which problems to solve. So, you know, and, and, and as you grow in a business, there's just so many things that are unknown that you need to build. You know, the, the team, the accounting, the space, the, the sales channels, sales people. Um, and then it, uh, we get into funding. How do you fund your business? Uh, what, what's, what, what's an angel investor? What's a VC and all sorts of things, are, and, and so it's really important to be able to um, focus on the right problems at the right time. And I feel like um, and mentors and, and advisors were key for me to do it as, as quickly as possible. I feel like I could have, uh, I guess the, the, the way I went about it is that I really wanted to make sure that I, I got there as quickly as possible. I felt like asking for help and getting that help and not trying to make all the mistakes myself was really important to me. I had a limited budget and I just wanted to have a more limited time and I just wanted to, to, to uh, proceed or progress as quick as possible. So just keep networking and uh, trying to identify all the parts of the company and try to make sure that they're all moving in the same direction. So slowly, pile by pile, moving forward. Like I said before, the, the milestones, every time you, fit, you, you, you get to a milestone, you're all happy about it, you just realize there's just way more problems and they're more difficult to solve. So the development, how you build a team, what about funding, and then what about clients? You know, I like what you're building, who are they? What do they want? Um, and uh, it's just, uh, it's, it, it, but I tell you, it's, it's so much fun to start from zero and do something new, build a new company. That's always been uh, something that's been keeping me going. Uh, it, it just, it's so crazy. It's 
so awesome to be able to, to do it. And uh, that's sort of the, the portion of the program about the kind of background. I just want to now talk, talk to you about, uh, show you a demo and talk to you about uh, the product. Just one sec. So, uh, Space View is a shopping visualization application. Uh, we started off by having a Works both, works both in video and photo mode, but essentially we, when we capture an image like this background, we are able to import and see uh, um, models that are in perspective to scale. We can um, rotate them, we can lift them off the ground, uh, but when, we're, when it's said and done, we can see an object in perspective to scale. It's that simple. Um, so. <laughs> The way the way this works is we're using uh, hardware and software uh, to to uh, automate this process to make it uh, magic for people. Nobody cares if this is augmented reality or whatever the other technical names are. It just it, it, it works. So we are using the gyroscope in the device to know where the floor plane is, and we need one dimension to be able to populate all the rest of the scale stuff. So here we have the device height and the ceiling height uh, and uh, we, we can tap on the create walls button and I can just kind of tap and um, tell the program where the walls are. I can adjust the, the ceiling height. The ceiling is taller than 8 feet. And when I'm done with that, basically all I have, what I have now is kind of a new file type, a new environment. It's a dumb two-dimensional background image that's now bound and it has perspective and scale inside of it. So now we can add any object we want to it. So uh, things that go on the, on the floor, the floor objects, we can just drag and drop and you know get a, some desks and some chairs. But uh, what's really cool is we can do uh, a lot more with like, like wall objects. We can uh, drag and drop um, a light fixture on the, on the wall and it knows exactly where the walls are and just kind of sticks there. Um, here is a window. And the cool thing is the window the window will follow along the wall. We can move it up and down the toggle. And if we had some let's see, here is a light fixture, it'll just go on the ceiling. So you, you really it's a, it's just a, a a new way or to, to let consumers 
interact with um, items they want to buy. It's, this is a, we're allowing everybody to be an interior designer for their own space. And, and so it's not only that we are trying to make mobile shopping better, we're really kind of improving the whole, like, the whole shopping experience uh, as, a, as, a, as a whole. So this works uh, online, but it also works for in-store. So let's say you go to Ikea and you see a chair or you see a rug, uh, you still want to be able to see it in your house. And you currently cannot do that without something like this. Yes, so um, here, here's an interesting one. Here's a moon rover. <laughs> here's a vase. So um, the way you do that, I, I put a vase down on the ground. I make sure that it's below the table, and then I, then I raise it. So, so it's, 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 the way it works is that uh, I, if, if I select an object uh, and I can, I can just tap uh, on a different object and automatically replace it. So I can do quick A-B testing of whether I like the blue or the, the red sofa or a chair or a uh, seven foot tall <laughs> guy from a video game. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the way this works is we, we are trying to make it super easy for consumers to just have this experience. So uh, our business model is uh, we first want to make white label apps for retailers such as Pottery Barn or, or Ikea so that we create um, a, an app for them where we, we would need to have 3D model assets as a part of the, uh, uh, our, our library. And so when people are browsing, the they, again, will browse this the same way they would, they would browse any, anywhere else, but when they get to something they like, then they'll be able to turn on the camera or um, get a photo from their library and import stuff in it. And the cool thing is, um, so down on the, on the bottom is the, the, uh, a list of all, all of the favorite items that I have liked that I want to use. And up above is a list of all the things that I have in my space view. And so, um, you know, here's a cart, and basically you'll be able to see all the items there that I have there, and go ahead and purchase them. Um, so um, the, the library could be anything. You know, we so uh, we've gotten a lot of interesting interest from different different kinds of uh, retailers or different different kinds of folks. So uh, I, because of my background as an architect, I really wanted to focus on furniture and house lighters. I feel like that's a vertical that's really could, could benefit from uh, this type of experience, but it's really this is a visualization tool that could be used for, for anything. So uh, when we talked to eBay, eBay thought that, that they would like to, to use this uh, type of technology. Hello. You're on Good. Sorry. Uh, for uh, car accessories, take a photo of your car and then put rims on it to see how they look, look what they look like. Uh, we talked to uh, a gentleman. Uh, window and door manufacturer, number one problem they have is the clients don't know what that door or that window will look like in their space. So um, you, know, you, can, you can browse through this thing and then uh, aside from using just the, 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 the camera, we, you have your own library of images that you've taken. And again, it's, a, it's, it's, it's really, what I really like about it is that it's a, when you look at it, it's just a, a two-dimensional image, but then when you open it up, it's, you have um, a lot more power to do whatever you want with it. So uh, what's really cool is that um, I think we, we give users um, flexibility and utility to really kind of see some of the stuff. But what's really cool is that when they're done exploring it, uh, what, what, what you see is, a, is a, a file that can be easily shared on social media to really kind of uh, ask your friends or ask experts of what, what do they think about this thing. And when my friends see this, um, they can actually load, uh, load the app, go into the app, and change things around and say, no, I don't really like that chair. You know, I'd like a different chair. So um, it's, 
it's really uh, not only that we I feel like we're kind of adding utility in something that people really really need, but it's it, it's a really cool way for um, us to in, in, increase uh, social marketing and social media engagement to to our brands. And anytime somebody shares uh, their space with a pottery barn chair, that you know that's the best kind of marketing there is to to pottery barn. So forth. So, um, and when I'm done uh, with this, the, we automatically save that image so that I can share it or make a note of this is what I like and don't like and sorts of, all sorts of things. So, basically, we are um, right now where we're at. Uh, our prototype is, is functional. Um, our app is about probably 85% done. Uh, the demo is good, but we still need to, to work out some kinks to be able to go to market. And uh, we're talking to um, clients. We still don't have a, a, a first. We, we don't have a first client yet. There are a few smaller retailers that are interested in uh, working with us, um, without having the funds to, to pay for the upfront cost for us to finish the app. Uh, we have some larger retailers like eBay and Jelvin that really are interested in, in, in moving forward with us and they would, they would have the funds to kind of uh, pay to get the exact functionality they want. However, working with those big companies is a pain in the butt <laughs> because they take forever. Uh, it's a, the, the, the sales cycles on, on those things are, could be 6 to, to 12 months. Um, so, uh, what's really exciting is that uh, but why I'm excited to be here tonight is that I feel like most people that uh, come present here are people that, have, uh, that are successful, that have been proven that they're done, and uh, I'm, I'm not. I have some teammates here in the audience, and we are still in the trenches, and uh, the jury is still out whether we're going to make it or not. So um, we've been self-funded so far. We're really looking for, um, for, for funding at the moment. We're looking for clients. Um, we're still very much uh, in that kind of startup mode, trying trying to make it. I think we all have. Um, we know that the product we're building uh, has potential, and our, our clients are, are really telling us the same same thing. Uh, but still, it's, it's such a tough thing to create something new and make a you know a profitable business out of it. So. Um, it's been about 14, 15 months <laughs> uh, of a journey, and uh, we're still kind of trying to make it, trying to, to, to get there. Sure. Yeah. So, so I, you know, I, I, uh, I also, we, we also really wanted to get into uh, a couple of uh, all of the accelerators that are in town. Uh, we've been rejected by Pi twice and by Two <laughs> Fund once. Um, jury's still out with uh, Upstart Labs, but uh, I just, uh, I really feel like it's uh, it's super awesome to be doing this in Portland because people are so nice and so willing to help out. I just say, hey, my name is Milos, I have this uh, idea, I'd like to buy a coffee and tell you about my, my uh, idea and, and, and get some feedback and it's just amazing the kind of people that are uh, CEOs and all kinds of different people that are really willing to uh, take time out to help everything else out. So um, I, I love the environment of kind of we're in this together versus we're in competition with one another. So um, that's been really awesome. And uh, with that, we'll go to Q&A. Hey, so this is really great. Uh, give me a hand. <laughs> Uh, so um, make sure you have a mic. I'm going to come around. Um, just raise your hand, and I will be there. Uh, easy. So you're 14 or 15 months into it. Uh, looking back, do you wish you had a technical co-founder in the beginning? Do you think that's okay now? And when you did hire people, have you hired people? What people did you hire and why? Great question. Uh, I'm still looking for a CTO. Uh, I think that uh, it would have, been, would have been easier to have a partner, but we have a really good partner. I feel like uh, 
having just rushing into it and then partnering with the people who you don't have the trust and the relationship with could be disastrous. So uh, I, I don't know if this is probably not the easiest um, way to go, but I feel like it was the right for me at the time. I just, uh, um, in my previous business, I worked with my dad, and so it was just implicit trust, and it was, yeah, it was way easier having a partner. However, in this particular point in time, I, didn't, I couldn't find somebody who I uh, could partner with. So I'm still looking for help. Uh, I've, um, right now, I have um, uh, some help with, with, with uh, 3D modeling, building the 3D models and graphics. I have a couple of uh, people who are uh, partners with me, and then um, I have a, uh, a, a mentor who is a, an executive uh, advisor who is doing, uh, Larry here, who is doing um, marketing and kind of business development with me. Uh, I also have, so I, I'm still working with uh, Spot Matrix and Josh Aller, who is really a genius with uh, photogrammetry, is he basically built the entire 3D engine of, of this thing, and he's our uh, chief scientist. And uh, we also are partnering with um, a mobile development firm out of Serbia. That's where I'm from, but it's, it's, a, it's a remote, and it was tough. I mean, I really wanted to get a local uh, team, but uh, it was it, it proved too challenging. It was uh, not it, 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 even without it being more expensive, it was just uh, impossible. I think. That, so coming from an architecture field where it was a 60% unemployment rate, my first uh, mobile portal meeting, there were like probably nine people that stood up and said, like, we need developers. <laughs> if you've seen a computer, if you're hiring right now. <laughs> and I just felt like I was in this alternate universe, you know, I was just like, what is going on right here? What's up? You know? I guess I, I, I felt good that I chose the, the right uh, the field to get into, but it was a, an amazing, amazing thing. So. Um, yeah, so I, I first uh, started building a team, a tech team, just because I felt my technology, I wasn't sure if it was, was going to work or not. And then once I kind of had that under control <laughs> a tiny bit, I started working on some of the other, uh, other parts. Hi, Andres. Um, sorry. First of all, congratulations. This is very impressive. Um, second, uh, what characteristics are you looking for in a partner? have them identified, um, and uh, what would you say about Pi and your experience being rejected in this accelerator type of our programs? Um, I, I, well, uh, so I feel like uh, culture is really important, and uh, you know, it, it, it seems like it's such a cliche, but I really feel like uh, this is a, it's such a hard, I mean, doing being an entrepreneur is really difficult and challenging, and so I think you really got to make sure that you have a good cultural fit and that you can work with somebody over the technical stuff or the, the, the background stuff. Uh, however, for me, it would also be really important that the te technical person was sound because I wouldn't be able to, to know whether they were or not. So um, that's that's on that. And then I think uh, accelerators programs are great. I, I guess <laughs> I would love to do one. Uh, I haven't, so I, I can't comment on how good they are because I haven't been uh, in one. I think you're asking about the, the experience of being rejected, though. You know, the, uh, it's uh, it's okay. <laughs> None. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. What, I'm not sure what happened. I, I was really excited about it, and particularly, I I just. Uh, I just applied for Pi the second time for this next um, class, and uh, I really felt like it was a good fit with Wyden Kennedy and kind of the marketing um, agency fit to it. And we were doing retail and uh, stuff like that, but I don't know. Um, but it's one of those things where uh, who knows? I just it's persistence. I just you gotta wake, wake up the next morning and. Uh, Go do more networking and try more. Hi, I'm Adrian. Uh, congratulations on so far on this. Uh, I would I have a question specific to Spaceview. I'm wondering with your 
I know you don't have a retail client yet, but in your interactions with them, how receptive have they been to providing with 3D models of all their, uh, their inventory? So some of the challenges are basically that um, particularly furniture retailers are not that tech savvy. They are pretty uh, archaic in, with their uh, tech stuff. And so it's been a, it, it, it's a challenge just to explain what we're trying to do and what it is. And so um, uh, 3D models, basically, um, the way I feel about it is it, it, it's a huge range of what, people, what retailers have. So some high-end furniture retailers such as Herman Miller and Knoll and um, Steelcase have all of their models online ready to, to be downloaded because they cater to architects. They know that if architects put their models in the 3D models, they'll sell that stuff for the building. However, Pottery Barn has none. And uh, I do feel like uh, in the design process, in, uh, a designer made a 3D model of that chair or of that table someplace. Now, it's just a matter of whether uh, the marketing people know where that is. And they don't currently, because nobody's asked them for it before. So it's a, it's a new field. I feel like we're pioneers, and so it's not going to be that easy. Uh, we talked with Pottery Barn, they would want us to go in and scan the entire library. So we'd go into a warehouse, set up a scanner, and go to work. <laughs> Hi, thank you for your presentation. I enjoyed it. Um, I was kind of interested in uh, pricing. How do you uh, price your product? <laughs> do you sell like a, you know, one thing, or do you, you know, an ongoing thing? Great, so, uh, in the, so our first business model was to do a white label application for retailers. And the way that would work is that we would have a one-time fee to create an application for them. They would have their logo, their branding, so we can take their API, import all of the, the, the photos and all the information about SKUs and products into our library and uh, get the 3D models in there as well. And then it would be uh, a monthly uh, revenue source on that was either linked uh, to revenue or a link or, or a, a flat fee, and uh, I've gotten retailers that want, that prefer both of those things. So, so how do you figure out the price point? Well, I, I'm not sure yet, but if you know, you let me know. <laughs> uh, it's tough, you know. It's uh, you look at what other people are doing, and uh, uh, I'm not sure. So the the, the, the what I'm trying to do right now is to find, I found a couple of smaller retailers that want to be our partners. So I'm trying to raise money, build the app, and sort of give them the app for free, just to be able to get information about what kind of impact does this have on them. So if uh, Pottery Farm has $100 million a year revenue, and we are able to raise that by 20%, uh, then we know the ballpark, we can talk about how to pr price it out, and how to prove, prove to them the value versus uh, price, that thing. But right now we still, still don't, don't know, don't have enough information. I, before, before I ask, I just wanted to give you uh, one more, um, uh, I forgot to, to mention. Um, so, um, advantage of being a non-technical uh, founder um, is something that I was really excited about, and so I didn't think there were, there were any. I was I always thought I was just going to be fighting an uphill battle, but it turned out there are some advantages. And so the, the advantage was that once I figured out what kind of technology we were going to need to use to make this happen, it's called augmented reality. And so I looked at <coughs> there were actually some uh, few startups that are our competitors. They're doing the same thing, and um, what's interesting is that I think most of them are or all of them are kind of. Uh, tech startups that have realized that this awesome technology has a use in furniture retail. And uh, I feel like my background as a designer was just the opposite. I was like, I know exactly what I want the experience to be like. I gotta find the technology to get there. And so I feel like we've built a, 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 a product that was that, that's better and different than everybody else. So uh, I feel like all the, our, our competitors in order to understand the perspective, they need to have a printed a target that you put down on the floor and be able to uh, look through the, the camera to 
pick up strength and scale. And it only works in video mode, really. Uh, so uh, uh, when I started and I told my um, developers that I wanted to, to be able to take a photo and do it still, they were like, why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. And it's, it, it, it does as a designer. And so we were able to kind of uh, be able to add uh, a dimension of being able to tell where the walls are and where the ceiling is. And so I think we're the only ones that are uh, offering to be able to, to use this tool for putting stuff on the walls and putting light fixtures on the ceilings. So um, that's, the, that, that was, that's the big advantage, I feel like, was that uh, even though I'm not non-technical and I couldn't code, I, I knew exactly what I wanted just because of my experience in architecture. Skyler, I, um, my question is actually directly related to what you just said. Is uh, so since you have the concept of your idea for the next step, sometimes for people it's market testing, and you talk about market testing using research. And I was curious how you went about that process, especially earlier in your company, or if you're still in that process, uh, because that's actually something that a lot of startups don't really talk about. Is other than that, you do the clipboard thing, you do the surveys, you just talk to as many people as possible. But what was your process? Um, I think it's really important to try to get some of that inf information, even though I felt like this is, I know exactly it's gonna, how it's going to look and how it's going to work, but you have to do it. So um, I think uh, the, what worked the best was the video and the, being able to do a demo. It's, it's, it's such a visual thing that um, I have a hard time still describing it with just words. So uh, what really, was really important was, you know, to be able to do a little demo, a little video for people to, uh, to see if they like it. Um, I, mean, I, I, again, just because uh, I've done so much reading about startups and all this stuff, and I really love um, the Lean Startup methodology and what Eric Ries and uh, Steve uh, Blake, uh, Blank are doing, and, uh, but uh, we haven't gotten to the point yet where we can do a lot of testing. And just, I can't wait for us to be able to implement some of those things. We're still, um, in that early alpha stage. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, uh, all, all sorts of things. What, I mean, what, uh, yeah. I mean, so it's, 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 about, it's about the experience and it's about what people want. So, what I feel like people want is just this, this idea of there's a, there's a catalog where you can browse through and you can just click on things that you are interested in seeing, then you turn on the camera and you can put those things in, in, the, in your room and see what they look like, and then you'd want to share or not share, you know, I just want to see how the whole thing works. And there's just so many, and, and what kind of functionality? You know, when I talk to, uh, when I give a demo, people always ask all, all kinds of things like, can we change the, the, the wall color? Can we empty our room? Can we, and so, um, we're just scratching the surface. I mean, I feel like I have uh, <laughs> on a to-do list of probably three years worth of development and all kinds of improvements with lighting and you name it. Uh, so I think that uh, listening to, to, to uh, consumers is going to be key of determining what that is. Hi, uh, Michael Crawford. Uh, you mentioned that you have some kinks to work out. Uh, are you hiring? I'm very good at debugging. <laughs> yes. Talk to me, yes, absolutely. Sweet, see, networking at its best. Thank you, this is uh, very interesting, and yeah, I'd like my chair in uh, purple. Yeah. Um, you were talking about some of the other startups that are competitors, potential competitors. Do they have funding, and how are you looking to both protect your ideas sufficiently and, and meet that balance between protection and evangelism? Um, the startups, uh, the, 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 the few competitors that I know of, um, there's one pretty large company, Mateo, Mateo that, that, that uh, has a lot of backing and um, are doing, uh, they're kind of a part of a big company. However, I feel like they don't really understand the business model that we're going after, so we have a different business model, I think. Um, and the other companies uh, are startups, and they, they have gotten some funding, not uh, crazy amounts. And there's a French company, Augment, they just uh, 
kind of moved into the U.S. and I think they raised two twenty two hundred and twenty thousand dollars um, to get into the U.S. market as their second or third round. Um, IP protection, uh, we have a couple of patents pending and a couple of uh, provisional patents. Uh, I think, I'm not sure, really sure how that's going to play out. I think uh, it, it sounds, I'd love to have a patent, it sounds pretty awesome. Um, but I feel like really it's all about momentum and hype and uh, if we can kind of be the leaders and uh, the best protection I think is to just to, to be able to get out there in the front driver's seat and, and lead the way. Um, I, I just, uh, what our technology is pretty complex. I feel like if uh, Amazon wanted to um, copy us right now, um, with unlimited budget, it would still probably take eight to 10 months to, to, to get to the point where we are. And so um, I just feel like the more, we, the, the more we can just keep making, making the progress, the, the better it will be. And I feel like, uh, again, some of the patents that we uh, are going to go after, or are going after, uh, are just things that we kind of came up with by inventing and making things that, um, uh, as we kind of try to uh, improve our product. So if we can keep doing that and keep moving and being number one, I think that's going to be the, the best way to protect against the uh, competition. Also, I think it, it, it's, it's just uh, what I like, like about this business model is that we're going to be creating connections with retailers as well as maybe creating some online um, social uh, things with shopping and with design. And so the more we have that solidified, the, the tougher it's going to be for somebody to come in into our, into our niche. Next. Um, thank you. Um, so I I know you've been looking at the competitor apps and you're probably familiar with Snapshot. Yes. And I'm um, still so wondering, because that's been around for quite a while, and um, so they seem to be somewhat established, and anyone can get their app for free. Um, I guess I, I did notice yours seems like a, uh, it's, it's working completely in a different way, and it seems almost like a, a premium version of Snapshot. But the thing I did notice is that I, I am able to um, put put the items into a cart and purchase those items from the various retailers that are supplying them. Is that, first of all, is that how you would make your money? Do you get a certain percentage from those retailers? And the second thing is, what about the patent that like Snapshot and these others that have been around a while have? Is it a completely different patent because your technology works different? Um, I'm really not sure what all our competitors have patented. Um, so um, I can't. I'm not sure. I just it's some. I'd love to know <laughs> if I had the funds and the time to do it. I just don't. So uh, at some point maybe. Um, but uh, uh, revenue straight through the app. Thank you. Uh, so yeah. So uh, I, this is a shopping experience. So the key is going to be to to, to make that as fluid, as, as simple as possible, and yes, you will be able to shop right from the app and purchase things. Um, again, how we could get our revenue, um, it's going to be, um, it's going to vary a little bit. So with uh, so one of our ways to go is to, to, to do a, a white label apps. So basically we'll just tap into and allow people to, to, to purchase through the ex existing online system of our partners. However, we also want to create our own marketplace app where you'll be able to buy all kinds of things and um, we'll still, we still haven't worked out exactly um, how that's going to work and what are the... But the idea, the, the, the bottom line is that it's always going to be free for uh, end users and we'll figure out a way to make money from people who are selling stuff. We are the vehicle, we are creating a technology and a platform for shopping to help retailers reach the gap with their uh, end users. Okay, so I think I, I don't think this was asked yet, but I actually have a question. Um, so I'm a developer, and both as a freelancer and uh, working for an agency, um, here all the time. I have an app, idea for an app, 
Um, but, and then they won't tell you anything. Um, you know, they want an NDA right off the bat. They didn't, you know, obviously don't have any money, and so they want a partner or something like that. I hear that all the time, and it's very uninteresting. So what do you do to get in touch with the people that you need and not sound like everybody else? Yeah, so um, and it's, it's, a, it's a real concern. So when I started, um, I was really scared to, to, to share my idea with anybody because I felt like I was an outsider. I didn't know how to code. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff, but I had an idea. So all I had was this cool idea that I thought was cool that somebody could just take and make a part of it. However, um, I quickly realized that it's not really about the idea, it's about the execution. And there's so much work that needs to be put into making it, get, getting there, that I just felt there's no way somebody is going to be like, oh, that's a good idea, I'm gonna take all of my savings and next two years of my life to spend this idea. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, I, you know, I, I, I so yeah, so I, I feel like I quickly grew out of that stage of being kind of protective and afraid um, that someone's gonna steal my idea just because, uh, you know, I, I talked to, when I went to eBay and talked to them about it, they said, hey, listen, we, we uh, want to partner up with companies that are doing innovative things. We just, it's not our core business to um, create this type of stuff. It's much easier. We know what we're good at, and we are looking for innovative companies that are, that are doing some things that we want to incorporate into our thing, but we have no desire to spend time and effort to build something that may or may not work. So, I really feel like there's not much... Yeah. So we're going to do a couple more, and then we're going to wrap up here, so think of your questions quick. Great talk, Milos. Uh, you definitely have guts, and I think that's what it takes to make sure you make it all the way through. Um, with this very unique and groundbreaking technology that you have that goes beyond just the practical application that you've shown us, have you sought out uh, people in the virtual reality space, um, kind of in the traditional way that people are still trying to create this game, realistic experience? but more so where the ship is really heading in the direction that's powered by Google, a like Google Glass. Is there, have you explored any opportunities or even had coffee or even sent emails out to, uh, to, you know, to pursue that avenue? Great, great question. So I think one of the biggest challenges is when you're when an entrepreneur is what to focus on, right? And uh, I think the, what I really like about this technology is that it's, uh, it's really it's a visualization platform that can be used in multiple, all kinds of different ways. However, I just don't have the time and effort right now to pursue every single avenue where I see this fitting, like real estate or computer design, professional apps and things like that. So, no, I, I haven't uh, pursued this. I think it's a great idea, but I really focused on this vertical of like furniture and um, that. However, I do have a, I do have a, what I want to do is uh, there's a, an app, there's a, there's a pr program called uh, SketchUp. It's probably the world's largest, probably most commonly used 3D modeling program that all interior designers and architects use. So uh, my goal, secret goal, if not being taped, is that to, I want to create, I, this could be a, um, essentially a um, viewer for anything that's made in SketchUp. So SketchUp, there's this huge library that's user populated with millions of 3D models um, that, that Google has. And so we are gonna enable people to basically be able to browse through any of those models and be able to view them in their space with that technology. I had a follow-up question based on what we were just talking about. What's your percentage breakdown right now of time networking, time fundraising, time doing the work, and time learning something new? Oof. I don't know, I feel like I have at least three full-time jobs. Um, I, I don't have a good answer, <laughs> honestly. I mean, it, it, it's just, it, 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 it's tough. I feel like uh, it's, uh, one of the biggest challenges is really figuring out what to, to focus on and uh, that's why I'm happy to have a really good team so that I can kind of get some help in some of those areas. But uh, it's hard. I mean, I, I feel like, uh, so for example, um, uh, trying to get funded is a whole, it's a, it's a whole 
huge thing that takes six to twelve months. So you got to start early, and you got to you got to do this whole thing. And um, on top of that, again, you have to kind of keep the development going, and the, the fundraising would be a lot easier. You get clients, <laughs> and uh, if we get funding, we could build an awesome product quicker and get clients. So it's just a catch twenty two and stuff. So I, I, I'm not sure. I, I feel like moving um, the whole process kind of linearly is, is kind of a, a good way to go because you don't want to have uh, imbalance in, in the company, in the business. So um, if I spend a week on really trying to go after um, investors and in, in meetings with uh, angels, I'll spend the next week on kind of revisiting and uh, touching base with my potential clients. And, Thank you very much. Thanks so much. So like I said, um, keep an eye on the mailing list. Uh, I have no idea when our next meeting is next month. Um, I, there's a potential that it's going to be really crazy, and we'll, if it is, we'll, we'll fill up this whole room, which would be really cool. Um, so anyway, uh, thanks for coming. See you sometime next month. Thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot, man.